Take a guess. Guess which Guardians of the Galaxy character I'm working on today. Speaking of Guardians, I worked on their suits last week before I've seen the movie, so I wasn't sure about the shade of blue on the suits. Luckily, I wasn't completely off, and a lot of you watched my video too. Thank you for those who are newly subscribed. Let me introduce myself. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler, especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch-up here and there to unleash their hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Today, I'll be working on Adam Warlock. My initial impression is that this figure is pretty good. It is very nicely sculpted, and I don't see any obvious missing paint details. That is, until I saw this comment saying that this looks like a Happy Meal toy but bigger. Now I see it too. Let's deconstruct this figure. There is an FAQ on the paint and brushes I use in the description box below. What I do appreciate is that they use a variety of gold on this figure. They used a creamy muted gold on the suit. The skin tone is actually pretty screen accurate, and I like that the hair is made out of another kind of gold plastic. They could have just used the same gold, but they didn't. The sculpt of this figure is also really really good. Look at all those details. Another thing that I really enjoy is that Hasbro seems to have stopped using that orange red on the figures. Oh, for some reason, I thought the thing on his chest was a happy squid. But I think it's actually a skull of some sort. But it always looks like a happy squid to me. I love that they did the painted texture on the cape too. It's a nice touch. They also captured Will Poulter's likeness pretty well. He looks a bit on the young side, but overall it looks pretty accurate. The quality of the recent MCU figures seems to be getting better. Adam doesn't really need a makeover. I just want the gold to be shinier, so this should be easy. So. Can I make it? Let's start by sanding the figure a little bit. I'm only sanding the smooth areas and I'm going to try and avoid the areas with texture. This should help the paint stick onto the plastic better. I'm only sanding the surface very lightly. I don't want to expose the gold plastic beneath the red paint. Oh, also, be very careful when removing the head. The next joint is made out of this softer plastic. I do not recommend twisting the head off. I was doing that and the head wasn't coming off, and I could see the actual neck joint twisting. It felt like it was about to snap into two. Keeping the head on may be a safer option. Alright, let's paint. The suit appears to be much shinier in the beginning of the movie, so I'm going to base my figure on that. Let me first go over the suit with gold paint. I'm keeping the paint thin so I don't cover up the texture on the suit. Alright, you may notice that I didn't paint over the shoulder pads, the chest piece, or the armbands. That's because I want them to be a different kind of gold. According to the reference images, these areas have a different finish. They appear to have a more frosted or plastic sheen. I don't know how to achieve that exact finish, so I'm going to mix a bit of this tan color to kind of dull down the gold and I'll apply this over these areas. Oh, that also includes these armor pieces on his legs too. Hmm, I'm still not that happy with how the suit looks. All the details are still blending into each other. Let me go over the panel lines with the dark brown. The goal is to exaggerate the details so the suit doesn't look too bland. The reason why I'm using brown instead of black is because brown is a much more natural looking shading color. And if I make mistakes, it's much easier to fix too. I'm also adding some fake shadows around those stripes to make them pop a bit more against the suit. Hmm, let me add just a bit more gold under the suit to make it a touch shinier. And 
and I'm gonna go over the skin tone with a little bit of gold left on my brush. I do want to keep that yellowish tone. I just want to add a slight sheen to it. Look at that. That looks really, really good. These areas now pop so nicely against the suit. All there's left are the red areas. And I'm gonna try this red metallic paint I bought recently. Oh, that doesn't look right. Let me see. Oh, I have to shake it first. Let me try again. Ah, there we go. Let's see how this looks. Let me test it on his foot first. Mmm, it's like the exact same shade or something. I can barely see a difference. I want the red to be a bit deeper, so I'm gonna mix a bit of brown into the metallic red. I hope this doesn't affect the finish. Mm, this doesn't look all that shiny. I can't tell this because I added some brown, or the paint is just very sheer. Maybe I need to do multiple coats. So let me go over all the areas quickly first. The reason why I bought this red metallic paint is because I figure if this works, I can use this on Iron Man. Hmm, it doesn't look that metallic. Oh well. Let me work on the happy squid next. I think it's supposed to be silverish. Alright, on to the cape. I want to darken the insides of the cape so the gold looks even brighter. I'm gonna use this as a shading color, focusing mostly on the folds. And I'm gonna do the same to the back side too. I like the printed texture on the cape, but it's a bit dull. Let me brush a thin coat of gold over it to add a bit more shine. I don't have the patience to do each shape individually, so this will do. Mm, I think that helped. On to the face. The only minor issue is that the details are a bit hard to see due to the similar shades of gold. Let me dust a thin coat of gold over the skin first. I'm also gonna add a bit of gold onto the hair as well. Just a bit, not too much. Alright, let's define his brows a bit more with the brown, so they look a bit more obvious. I'm also gonna use this dark brown to emphasize the individual strands of his hair, to give the hair more volume so it doesn't look like a block of plastic. And finally, his gem on his forehead. It is so tiny, so I'm just gonna dab a dot of gold there to make it stand out more against the skin. Alright, here's the finished head. It looks so much more defined. It's pretty much the same head, but with more contrast. And let's put the head back on. Here's Adam Warlock all finished. Just like the head, there's way more contrast now, and the details in the suit are much more visible. The same goes for the cape too. It doesn't look as flat anymore. Let's take a closer look. Oh, the red is actually more metallic now. That said, the original red wasn't bad at all. It was a nice, rich, glossy red. What do you think? Do you like what I've done to Adam Warlock? Let me know down below. On one hand, this was a relatively easy fix. I just want Adam to be more golden. But on the other hand, I think I almost overdid it. He's starting to look a bit like a tin man. I think if I went a little less heavy-handed on the skin tone, it would have looked better. But overall, I'm still pretty happy with it. I love all the details on the suit. This figure reminds me of White Vision. It would be interesting to see Adam Warlock interact with White Vision. Before I do the photo shoot with Adam, let me show you these photos I did with Gamora. This Vormir display is one of my earlier Marvel dioramas. I originally made it for Black Widow and Hawkeye. 
But then recently, I realized this also works for Thanos and Gamora too. And oh boy, these two figures are so awesome. It is a bit hard to pose Gamora, but Thanos, he's just so fun to pose. He is so expressive with his body language. I can hear that epic music and feel the chills again just by looking at these photos. Check out my Vormir video to see how I made this. Alright, on to Adam Warlock. I love how this figure looks, but I wish it came with an extra set of hands or something. His ankle joints are very stiff, which is both good and bad. I don't have to worry about him falling, it's just that it takes a little while to find the right angles for his feet. Otherwise, he's very photogenic. Whoever is doing the facial capture is doing a fantastic job in my opinion. Tilting the head up and down changes the emotion slightly, even though it's the same expression. He can look neutral, confident, angry, etc. It is honestly very impressive. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And as always, stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.